All right, Esper, Esper Narset. So Esper Control is an archetype. Esper Control is an archetype that hasn't really found its legs in the new format a ton. I think this is a decent direction to take that archetype in for a couple of reasons. The two notable difference between a lot of the Esper Control you saw last season and this are two things. First is that you'll notice I'm not playing Absorb or Chemister's Insights. And the reason for that is Narset and Baby Tefri both make these cards really awkward. I think if you want counter spells, you probably want them in your sideboard for the matchups where they're really good. AKA generally not the matchups where there's a bunch of this card around. And then Narset allows us to generate card advantage while also not caring about the opponent's Narsets that are going to prevent us from drawing extra cards. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pop on into some matches here with this and see how it goes. So this is my preferred direction to take like Esper Control in basically. I prefer Kaya as opposed to a more narrow card like um, like Ashiok for a couple of reasons. The first is that you need to understand that Command the Dreadhorde takes cards from both graveyards and Ashiok only exiles your opponent's graveyard. So Kaya being able to exile your own Planeswalkers out of your graveyard is a meaningful, meaningful line of text. The second is that Kaya is relevant in a variety of the aggro matchups while while Ashiok would basically be just for Command the Dreadhorde, which I think is a little bit too narrow of a slot. Thanks, Epic. Green, green, red, Sarkin, and white aggro are kind of my two safety net lists I have put together in my deck editor for the weekend. If we if we get to like the end of Friday's stream and I'm not happy with anything, I'm just gonna flip a coin and pick one of those. This isn't a fight you can win. I've got time. you out of time you're not welcome here anymore the title in fact did not update thank you fixed bell haunt all right so they're playing a mid-range deck Still missing my second black source here, unfortunately. Matter of time. Now what? Just that do to you? <laughs> you must feel pretty smart right now. Their hand is also not particularly good. <clears throat> I'm really good at banishing things. Well, we're going to gain another four here. Not 
The awkward part here is that we're missing we're missing second black mana here still. Our ideal draw at this point is like a Tefri, so we can start generating some card advantage. So we're going up to 34. And the good one of the things we have going for us at this point is that because the opponent's deck um, is a mid-range deck, we have um, they have a lot of cards that are just going to be dead against us. So we gain some virtual card advantage that way. Um, I'm actually going to hold on to this this non this extra land for now because if they play another bell haunt, I'd like to hold on to my elder spell. Looking to draw Kaya's Wrath at this point. Hey, Justin. Thank you for the 10-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. This uh, speeds up the clock pretty significantly here. All right. That's like, that's like, hey, look, a distraction, right, at least. Although this does mean I can't fire up the Mobilize District this turn, so they get to crack me for 9. And then Tefri at least not only gains a bunch, but he also triggers the Othakaya, which is nice. Uh, the land here actually means that I can animate my mobilized district because it only costs three with Tefri in play. So that means if they want to kill Tefri, they have to attack their hero into this mobilized district. There are three copies of Kaya's Wrath in my deck. There's also three copies of Narset, which can impulse into Kaya's Wrath. Hold that thought. One cards into our deck without a sweeper. Am I dead on board? This is, uh, I forgot, I got the creature land, right? Mobilized District is great, chat. Hey, two more shots at a thing. Narset also gives us redraws. Come on. Keep up the pace. <sighs> this isn't a fight. Come on, dealer. dead feels feels bad man extra wrath oath of kaya um the rest of this seems fine just kind of, like I said, I think it feels bad losing that first game. So I think we're pretty incredibly ahead. Like my opponent never drew any of their dead removal spells and we didn't have a wrath in our top 20, 23 cards or whatever. But 
definitely think we're a little bit favored in this matchup, at least on average. Hey, Cellarin, thank you for the 10 months. Welcome back. Hope you're having a good one. Uh, I'll probably put Moment in on the draw. I don't know. I just have a lot of cards that do very similar things. So, like, what, what card in my deck basically right now do you think is Moment better than would be my question. That's what it, what it would come down to. Unfortunately, I'm currently missing double blue. So, like, Narset, generally one of my better draws in a position like this, and I can't currently cast her, which sucks. This is a good clean two for one for them. Really just need to, like, get to one of my sources of card advantage here. This, this, this game can't even go in my autobiography because there's 27 lands in this deck. Unfortunately, unfortunately can't even write about it. Just the worst. That's at least a blue source. We got that going for us. I think I'm going to bin this and try and hit a land for this again. Pretty punished there. Pretty punished there for not... Uh, not discarding this and then killing this because now they get to kill my Narset, which loses me a draw. Be pretty surprised if we can recover from here. We just don't really have anything going on. No time I won't hide from the world any longer. Concedes to Vito. We play, we play on. Maybe I'll be capable of drawing a Kaya's Wrath this game. I think this game was a pretty good example of like Belhaunt being reasonable. Belhaunt, Belhaunt has enough power and toughness to pressure my planeswalkers while simultaneously while simultaneously always being a two for one essentially. Unless it gets swept up in a Kaya's Wrath, and, like anytime I point a spot removal spell at a Belhaunt, I've spent two cards on it, which is like a good exchange for them. Hey, Team Hackman. Thanks for the 12 months of support. I really appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I have a sword to go with your shield. Yeah, Belhaunt, Belhaunt's just a very good card in general. It's just one of those cards that's, like, good against aggro, but also, like, reasonable against control. I like we're playing against Jim Davis MTG. He is very likely streaming as well. He is, so if you want to watch this match from both sides, you can pull up his channel as well. He's been, he's been playing Dreadhorde decks recently, if I recall correctly. I wonder if he's still doing that today. Hey, Argus. Thank you for the tier 2 resub. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Bump Black Widow Scratch. 10 out of 10. I 
All right, not not commanding dread hordes. Got it. Pretty unlikely that they can turn this on next turn, so we're gonna go ahead and get in our set down. Hey, Tucci, thanks for the brand new prime support. Welcome, welcome. Is Bellhaunt or Elite Guard Mage better? So the stat line on Bellhaunt's a lot better. Not dying to three damage burn spells is a pretty big deal in the red matchup. Mr. Pierre coming in hot for the third month in a row. Welcome back. Field of Rune. Is there a basic in my deck? I think there's a basic in my deck. Let's find out. I don't have a basic planes though. Is that ever beatable? I don't think that's beatable, right? Alright, I'm off it. It. Where the magic happens. I mean, like, that that game there that you just saw is a great example of why I'm just playing something aggressive on on Saturday. Like, there's just too many, there's too many random, like, mid-range and control things that, like, these decks that are hoping to play answers just, like, can't line up well into. It's why, like, even the best Planeswalker deck in this format is full of Sarkins, right? Because, like, having your deck full of Sarkins means that you get to just kill people very proactively with your Planeswalker deck. I, I agree, be rich. Missing our second black mana currently, which is a little bit awkward. Would like to draw a removal spell so we can kill this to keep the board a little bit in check. But it could be playing green black, likely some kind of dread horde amalgamation. Tyrant Scorn is not the worst because it means we're going to get to play Hero of Dominaria next turn and then plus and then be able to scorn something right away. Wow, that seems... That seems incredibly aggressive. Now now I get to play Tefri on an empty board, which is nice. Uh, he was playing Field of Rune with... Um, he was playing a land destruction deck, essentially. So hopefully, hopefully he'll run into a bunch of basic mountains and get his comeuppance. But our... Our three color mid range deck is just not about, three color control decks is just not about to be competitive there. Decided not to waste my time. 
Sometimes, sometimes they want it more than you, and that's okay. In the words of the greatest poet of our generation, you just gotta shake it off and move along to the next one. Trophy, okay. Yikes. Um, am I supposed to play this out and just let it die? So if I hit, if I hit the black source, we can contempt this Nissa, then we're in an okay spot. If we miss on the black source, we're gonna be in a pretty, pretty poor off. We let them have the Nissa and then we wrath their lands. Well, it's not a black source, but it's like an awkward contempt. Yeah, this is this is really good. And like like I said earlier in the season, right? Like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of decks that want that that want that style of effect, but they're not easy to build. It's much easier to build, you know, the linear aggro decks of the format than it is to build the interactive mid-range decks. So like things that are going to leverage this accordingly are harder to figure out basically. Surveil one. So they can't attack profitably here because I have mobilized this trick, so nice two three. I think I'd rather play white aggro. Why does it seem wrong, Sunshine? Why do I give two craps about a 2-3 that doesn't do anything in front of the face of my 3-3? Three, three? My, my Tyrant score and destroying something that can attack through my 3-3 three, three is much more valuable. Let's see if you're worthy. Morning in the space. Wilds are my shield. Yeah, Nissa. Nissa puts a lot of pressure into play very quickly. Not bad for a mouse. Probably mortifying the shade light. This game's basically an arms race to the next big bomb. The opponent's not attacking because there's a mobilized district over here that's a 3-3. Three, three. The power of friendship is keeping them at bay. Yeah, exactly. annoying it's got three power i wonder if they're a dread horde deck they could be
All right, perfect. They burned their trophy. We drew an Ascent, huh? God bless us. Yeah, Teffrey's probably better there. I'm kind of looking for a Kaya. So I can like start chewing up their graveyard. We found, yeah, we found some like Kaya adjacent cards, but not actual actual Kaya. Our, uh, our Ugin would also be good because it uh, closes the game out relatively quickly. Oh no. Oh no, they're looking at their graveyard. That doesn't bode well for the home team, chat. Whew. All right. All right. Just Nebraska's contempt. Got it? Yeah. All right, so we go after the wild growth walkers first, right? <laughs> I'm gonna make you suffer. There's only one wild growth walker, Nissa. I'm gonna make myself scarce. Let's get those out of here. I've got it. Hey, Nug Jug. Thank you for the three quarters of a year of support. I appreciate it. You better watch your back from here on out. All right. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. No, I am not making this up as I go. Uh, I don't know if we're solid for for fully in garbage time or not yet. Like every 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 Kaya activation gets us closer. I was one mana short of the draw step thought erasure, but if they're on, if they are on the command the dread horde deck, like there's a very real possibility they could punch through. You better watch your back from here on out. Keep up the pace. Now garbage garbage time is a reference to when you're so far ahead that your opponent can never catch back up, but you haven't actually won the game and you're gonna it's gonna take you a little while to fully kill them. I don't really have enchantments, so Mortify doesn't do much. Oath, like, kind of finishes some of their Planeswalkers, but not really. 
Doesn't kill too many of their creatures super meaningfully. Definitely want the Wraths against their Explore Package. I think Vito is fine here because they're likely to command the Dread Horde deck. And if they're not a Dread Horde deck, Vito counters uh, their Planeswalkers. Yeah, Bob. So this card, Tef Tefri Time Raveler and Narset Parter of Veils have largely pushed the Wilderness Reclamation decks out of the format because this card's basically soft removal for it. So, decks uh, not too far off of this one and Jeskai Planeswalkers are actually some of the some of the tiered decks in the format right now, which is nice. So, Reclamation, Reclamation is legal, but it's no longer, like, as popular as we thought it was going to be, especially at the start of the season. Uh, I got 27 lands. I'm on the draw with the scry. Let's do it. YOLO. So, like, bouncing an explorer creature feels kind of bad, but at the same time, it's like alleviating their pressure a little bit and giving me another land drop, which is nice. Because I have two Kaya's Wraths here, I think I'm going to play the first one out kind of proactively, although it does kind of suck if my opponent sticks a Planeswalker next turn. I wonder if Christy realizes how much weight I'm going to gain from having a giant snack bay behind me. She might she might not realize. I am a fat man who likes snacks. Get a treadmill desk? Probably, probably should. I think I'm just tap landing here.
The Fred coming in hot with the seven months. Welcome back. And Wazman with the brand new Prime support. Thank you for that. I know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Christy put, got me a mini fridge and a microwave. So I can have food easily accessible no. in my office while I work all day. Alright, well, the Kaya's Wrath is no longer a surprise. This is going to ultimate here at sometime soon. Kind of need to hit a Contempt or an Ugin next turn or a 5 mana Tefri to tuck this in. There's a there's a narset right here, chat. Don't don't say dead on board too loud, my opponent might hear you. I have this very pretty distraction right right here. I think we're I think we were dead regardless of what we did here. We wouldn't have died this turn, but we weren't winning this game by playing Kai out. All right, they found the line. They found, they found the line. They tanked about it. They tanked about it, but they found the line. I think I'm happy with how I'm boarded. Maybe I do want some elder spells. Yeah, I agree. The format definitely went from Elder Spells kind of a joke to format defining very, very quickly. I think I have to keep that because it's a second blue source. Your hand doesn't do a whole lot at the moment, thankfully. Reborn build around sounds great. 10 out, of, 10 out of 10. We had a reborn build around early in the season, but the person who submitted it put the stipulation in that it had to be it had to be a planeswalker deck, so it ended up not being good, but a non-planeswalker variation of that could be fun. Seen a few of those floating around that seem okay. Stormbreath Dragon, thanks for the three-month Twitch Prime sub. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Oh, 
Alright, well. There's the command the Dread Horde we suspected they were playing. I think we just go ahead and do this and clean the board up. Because we know they're not doing anything next turn because we know all their cards. This costs uh, six. That's unfortunate. Probably dead. I guess, I guess I have Contempt plus Elder Spell for after they command the Dread Horde, but it's not going to be super pretty. Someone asked about my preferred Nissa deck. I really like the, the blue-green climb deck that's on my website. Seemed pretty reasonable. When we, when we played it. So we're going to pay 9 here. And the way these explore triggers work, I actually get to contempt this Nessa before it makes a token, which is nice. That's unfortunate. So we're going down to 10. We'll probably contempt this other Nyssa and then we're just like hoping to draw Kaya's Wrath. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Yeah, this was a tough one. I think maybe we should have gone and found a Just Kai Friends list. This definitely felt a little bit, a little bit middling overall. Opponent at least missed three points of damage by not attacking with this right away. Or doing this pre-combat. Because, like, at this point, even if we, like, find some of our... Even if we find some of our better Planeswalkers... Like, they just have two Elder Spells in their hands here. So, like, even if we, like, stabilize this board, we're still going to be a little bit behind in that respect. I don't know, Rich. Are they? I don't like I don't I don't have an answer for you. Like why? Like I felt like we just didn't draw anything and died there. Like why why do you envision they're an underdog against uh against the Dreadhorde decks? Like we have we have things like Kaya that can slow them, we that can uh interact with the graveyards. We have things like Kaya's Wrath to clean up the board, we have Elder Spells to clean up their planeswalkers. Seems like seems like we would have we would have the tools to be successful there. But again, it's just like typical interactive deck things like do all your moving pieces line up well into their moving pieces. Yeah, I didn't I just didn't draw any of my card advantage that game. So like we kind of just like hit a couple of lands and then put it out. Like no no Narset, no Tefri, no Ugin. No Sir Trez can't tell. Uh, all of the decks that I pretty much play on stream rev come from the deck queue on my website. There's a point system that's set up that dictates uh, what we play and when we play it. You can always see what's going on there to know what to expect. So, one of the things that's kind of happened in this format, Bob, is that uh, although map was really good last season, it's really fallen off in terms of power level this season in large part due to the fact that there are so many good three mana planeswalkers and four mana cards that it's difficult to be able to like fully curve out with um with the map. So like taking time off to like activate your map basically feels really bad. Map getting bounced by little Tefri also is very bad. Really need to draw a land here. I forgot this made my spells cost one more, which is awkward. Perfect. Not a blue source, but at least cast Thought Erasure. Sure. Sure. 
Sure, Zag. So, like, if you, like, listen to the words that I actually said, I talked explicitly about having ways to interact with the graveyard, like Kaya. So I agree that, like, if you're giving your opponent free reign to just, like, cast all of their things, you probably aren't beating their things, right? That's why it's important to have interaction that lines up all into what your opponent's doing. So I agree with your assessment that, like, I'm not I'm not saying Kaya's Wrath is the reason why that matchup it seems like you have tools there. I'm saying because you have Kaya's Wrath in conjunction with these other cards that also do stuff to disrupt their game plan. It, again, doesn't just come down to, like, we have these things and these things line up all on their own. It's the, co it's the combination of things that's important. So they have an Elder Spell. I think I'm actually just going to take this extra Tefri here. So that way after they Elder Spell the first one, we can have another one to follow it up. Although, you know, they, if, they're, if they're aggressive, they might just kill this. Oh, I guess they could Oath of Kaya to kill this, huh? That seems fine for them. Simply Fatal. Thanks for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. I won't forget our time. And again, like, it could be that this deck, this archetype, isn't good against the Command the Dread Horde decks, but again, nobody out there is telling me they have experience with it, so I'm just giving you theory craft to, like, match what you're saying in theory could happen. Let's skip to the good and as, as with most things in Magic, there's really not a substitute for experience, so, like, actually sit down and put in the legwork and figure it out is, is the actual answer at the end of the day. Doesn't kill the graveyard fast enough. I mean, people keep, like, a comment like doesn't kill the graveyard fast enough feels to me like people think these decks are, like, re super fast reanimator combo deck. Like, they're not, they're, they're, these decks don't win that quickly. So, like, I feel like if you're like, well, Kaya's not quick enough, that seems like nonsense to me. She exiles two cards per turn. And very frequently, if you're doing something like taking out the Wild Growth Walker, you cut off what their deck is able to do at the head, basically. Like, you make it so the next, the next one doesn't we work. Will meet again. And, like, if you keep their Wild Growth Walkers exiled, they can't keep recasting Command the Dreadhorde because they just don't have the life to do that. So, like, again, Sags, like, you're saying it lines up well against Super Friends. That's like saying my deck lines up against Big Red, so it's good against uh, Mono Red Aggro, right? Like, these decks are functionally, fundamentally different. Like, I get it. They're both Planeswalker decks, but, like, how Jeskai plays out, for instance, is night and day different than how Esper does, and the tools that they have to interact with what you're going have, with, with what you have going on are similarly very different. And just like saying we're good against Jeskai, so we're good against Esper is is like nonsense. Like just because they're both decks full of Planeswalkers, the Planeswalkers are very different. I think our opponent's playing some kind of Planeswalker-esque deck as well. And, like, the other the other flip side of the coin is, like, I doubt the people that are, like, trying to disgust me and tell me that, like, you, you dumpster the deck. Like, I doubt you've played against configurations exactly like this. Like, Esper, like we talked about when we started this video, has kind of fallen off for the season. Although, I guess, uh, Tamiko... Oliver had, uh, he top aided the open, right? Although, I haven't seen that much of that on the ladder. What is uh what was his what did his look, list look like? Yeah. 
Yeah, like, like even Oliver's list here that actually looks like it's likely what we're playing against, if you're comparing that to, like, what I'm, what I'm saying, talking about here, like, Oliver's list literally doesn't have a Kai in the 75, and I agree that without a way to interact with your graveyard, you probably are gonna just run them over, but I also think the ability to interact with the graveyard changes the dynamic very drastically because once you get rid of their wild growth walkers, their second and third command the dreadboards have extremely diminishing returns. Hand's pretty good here. Even if they take my Thought Erasure, I get to hold up Veto to stop their 3-mana Planeswalker next turn. So pretty, pretty unlikely that they'll be able to stick a 3-drop next turn. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that. I got 27 lands. Let's run a couple off after him. I mean, we took the important three mana planeswalker out of them, so that's nice. I assume we're gonna see them play this, bounce this. Sorry, I'm late. That's more like it. I could like Elder Spell. Kill this, keep this from dying to Othakaya, but I think the returns on this later are going to be a lot higher than keeping a 3-mana Time Raveler alive. And then if this resolves, Ugin's pretty likely to resolve next turn, which is great. I'm no we need to move quickly. Hey, Critfall. Thanks for the four-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Trust me. I have a plan. So they know about our Elder Spell. They don't know about the contents of the rest of our hand. Wow, that's really aggressive, especially with this one on three. I guess they're going to bounce and replay Othakaya to give Tefri a love tap. Another oath, and that's why they're as aggressive as they were here. I'm gonna start pumping out two twos to pressure their planeswalkers. Like I could, I could like down tick and destroy something, but it's not really meaningful when I can both draw cards and apply pressure to the board. Yeah, they could have another little Tef, just like plan to run back the plus and then minus, and then replay the oath to finish the Tefri off. And like if they finish the Tefri, I still have an Ugin and I have a follow up. A bad idea. Wouldn't <laughs> said enough. All right, let's see if we can win something other than other than an Esper mirror. 
Before we do that, I would just like to say thank you to everybody for hanging out today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're out in the world. Uh, if you're new, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full-time here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. If you're someone who enjoys constructed magic, this is definitely the channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here, and we change decks every uh, 60 minutes to two hours, so you get a lot of variety in the stream. Um, as always, I'd like to give a shout-out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here doing any of that without their support, so thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. The Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series, a $5,000 cash tournament series that happens every single month in the Midwestern United States. If you can't make it out to the Midwest to play in one of their standard, modern, or legacy tournaments, be sure to check out their streaming coverage as well at twitch.tv forward slash NRG series. BCW Supplies are the only ones I trust to protect my paper, Magic the Gathering cards using code JEFF10 at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other fantastic gaming accessories there with them. PlayDKP.com will love to help you hold on to your Magic cards when you're playing on the go. They make a very unique product in a magnetic game board that can make it easy to uh, play cards while you're in a car, on a plane, or outside with a little bit of wind. And using code JEFF5, you can save 5% on your Dragon Claw at uh, PlayDKP.com. As always, I'd also like to welcome everyone out there to Hook Landing. You know, there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now, and I appreciate you choosing to spend part of your Wednesday here with us. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Remember, if you're new and enjoying the content, make sure you hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. It lets you know when I go live and with what. Heading on into the next one here. Yeah, it's fine. Doesn't have doesn't have any spot removal in it if they're playing something aggressive, but like Kaya's okay against aggro decks, and both of both of these are pretty good against anything more controlling. I think I lead on this. Did they have like a thief as a follow up? I'm in a lot of trouble. I notably uh, don't have a removal spell in my hand that I can cast yet, so their thought or research doesn't really matter next turn. Because I'm hoping to get whatever I find off the top. That's good. That's good life advice, Divic. Remember, if anything is free, you're the product. They are. They are selling you. This allows me to go search for his Kanta plus Tyrant score next turn, which is nice. Probably discard this Watery Grave to the Bell Haunt when it comes down. Hey, B-Boy, coming in hot with the brand new Twitch Prime support. Welcome, welcome. We're having a fantastic, uh, I'm just going to discard the Kaya and keep keep my lands in my hand. Narset was draw a card game three, which is about what she does a lot of the time. <laughs> Such violence is upsetting. Such violence is upsetting. I'm going to go ahead and score now on the off chance my opponent has Vito's in their main deck. Yeah, Wrath. Wrath would have been ideal there. Would have definitely loved that. Hoping to dodge Mortify for a turn here so we can get the Sertress Kanta flipped on over. Alright, one Thought Erasure, please. It's probably not going to be good enough. They're going to go land Liliana plus, and then they're going to get to draw four cards from my Kaskaya's Wrath. Yeah, we about to die to Liliana. I think we're really gonna be able to come back from here. We can try, but it's gonna be gonna be an uphill battle. Search for search for Escanta is good, but I don't know if it's draw them four cards good. What problem do you think my deck has that is solved by playing Massacre Girl? Blue is the color. Why is why is that a card that I'm interested in playing? Oh, was I supposed to take Kaya's Wrath there? Maybe. Probably not.
Yeah, I'm bas basically just treading water here. This is this is alting next turn too, right? Yeah. I think the 4-4 four, four Menace is relevant against the Planeswalker decks. I mean, I don't really think you're in the market for a sweeper against a lot of the Planeswalker decks. I guess it beats up Sahili tokens, maybe. I don't know. So, like, if you think I want it against the Planeswalker decks, why wouldn't I just, like, want an Elder Spell or something like that? I'm kind of I'm kind of off this deck. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this one and pull it off my website, too. This is uh, one of the things that's tough, like, as you as you play things, as you start with things that are early in the season, they, like, feel okay. As the as the format becomes more more tuned and defined, things things like this that we've spent less time working on becomes more and more apparent that they're just, like, not super efficient. So there's probably a reason things like this that are closer to a more traditional Esper control shell have not been seeing play and uh, definitely just felt pretty thoroughly outclassed in basically every match that we played there. So, I think uh, if you're looking to play Planeswalkers, you probably want to push in the direction of something like the Jeskai deck. Or, if you really want to play Esper, this is the uh, the Oliver, Oliver Tomiko list. is a little little bit different than what this is doing. With, uh, in terms of the mix of Planeswalkers, it has probably, probably try something in this direction as opposed to what I was playing here. Yeah, there's been a few different few different Just Kite leagues that are okay, Bob. 